So what is a website? It's, it's essentially a series of, of documents, of, of think word docs. Think um, it's, it's a bunch of images and a bunch of words and combined into this nice little pretty package that we see today. So as you guys know, you know, you've got a home page and then you've got a series of sub pages underneath that and then pages are all connected by these things called hyperlinks. But really, what is it? It's just a bunch of text. I mean, if you do a view source on your on your screen, and most of you have seen this before, it's it's just a bunch of lines of text. This is actually the top few lines of creativedepartment.com. So. Yeah. so, so websites are written in a language called HTML, like Taylor just referenced, and HTML basically tells your web browser how to take that information, all this series of texts and documents, and, and how to display it. So it puts it in a nice, pretty package for you. Yep. Uh, how does it get there? <laughs> How does that get there? So oh, websites are available via a URL, which is accessed via an IP-based network. Now we'll break that down. Simply put, um, a domain name and a URL is, is what we're seeking. An IP address is where it is, and a DN the DNS defines how does I get there. So URL. It stands for Uniform Resource Locator. And what that means is uh, that's the little line that you type into your uh, the input field at the top of every browser. And it yeah. specifies where um, where your specific, the resources that you're looking for, where they live. So it's the it's the address for that remote system. Yeah, and the, that last point is really important. It's a remote system. It's not necessarily a web page. And we showed you the browser and the example of the address bar right there just because that's one that we're all familiar with. But at the end of the day, a URL is just an address to something out in the tubes. It doesn't have to be a website. Let's let's uh, let's break it down and, and look at really what the true components of a URL. Are. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see that. We, yeah, we shrunk it so it was one line. So this starts out with the scheme. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, this is the format of every URL. We have scheme, user password, domain, port, path, query string, and anchor. Okay. Now, when you type in www.creativedepartment.com, a lot of these values are actually inferred and/or hidden from you because the browser does a lot of work for you. For example. Scheme, uh, you're familiar probably with these particular protocols. Scheme is actually a, just a keyword for the for a protocol. Okay, and if you want the next one, there, give, me that. Yeah. give me that. Give me that. <laughs> All right. So uh, a scheme or a protocol is essentially, like we said earlier, just a set of instructions for transferring data between the systems. Okay. So when we say HTTP, does anybody know what that means? Mike. Text transfer protocol. You got it. Okay. And then uh, HTTPS, uh, anybody other than Mike know what that denotes? Secure. Probably Secure. easier. Secure. Yeah, Secure. right. So whenever you go to buy something online, you'll see HTTPS for the protocol instead of HTTP. And what that means essentially is that the data that's being transferred between you and the server is encrypted so you can buy with confidence. Okay, so username and password. If you've ever had a setup like what we call HT access authentication on a website, it's just like a really like a poor man's authentication solution. Essentially what that is is uh, login. we he means login. Okay. So the next piece we have is domain. This is a common name under which a collection of network devices are organized. A good example of this is creativedepartment.com. We have our dev server, we have our live server, we have our file server, we have uh, our mail servers. And they all are something.creativedepartment.com. Um, so next we have ports. Uh, basically a port in this case is, uh, there's a distinction between a software port and a hardware port, but at the end of the day, ports are a location through which input output streams are sent, okay? So uh, like the little holes on the side of your laptop, which you can't really see them there, but you know, where you plug in your keyboard, and you plug in your mouse, and plug in your headphones and all that, those are hardware ports. Okay, the concept is the same. You're sending data through them and it's sending data back out through them. Uh, we have numerical ports in terms of URLs and uh, port 80 is actually the reserved HTTP communication port. Okay, so all internet traffic typically goes through port 80 and it is so typical that web browsers actually pull this away from you and you don't have to type in port 80, but you could technically. Um, so some other examples of ports when you do FTP, what is that, port 21? Uh, if you do SSH, which is another form of connection between one machine and another, that's uh, port 22. I think AFP goes across port um, 543. Is that right? Database communication with a MySQL database that powers Creative Department of Com. That's port 3306. You're going to have a quiz on these later. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the, the concept is there's a lot of different ports, and the value is, the, the implication is, is that you can have two web servers running on the same system as long as they're not occupying the same port, okay? Any questions? 
data and everything. I feel like I'm totally freaking you guys out. Okay, so <laughs> so next we have path. The path is the actual specific location on the file system, and typically this would refer to a file, a directory, or some resource. Okay, so if you're going to end, uh, if you're going to access the index.php file on creativedepartment.com, you could physically type that in, and it will return the value of that file. Next we have the query string, and this is actually the um, crazy string of data that sometimes you see when you access Google or other websites. Typically it's denoted with a little question mark, okay? Okay, so anyway, so the query string contains variables and data that get passed into the web application, and then the web application evaluates the value of those, and then does stuff based on that, okay? And the example, again, I'm sorry it's small, but if you do a Google search, uh, you know, on Google, you'll see all this stuff. And the important thing to note is this little question mark, and then it'll have <coughs> something equals something. That's the data that gets passed in. Okay. YouTube is shorter. It's all about that. The video is always like question mark yep. equals ID equals one two three four five. In that case, the variable is ID and the value is one two three four five. Okay, so lastly, the anchor, and this is not terribly important, but the anchor is used to define a hyperlink destination inside a document. So if you ever been to a web page where you click something and it jumps you down halfway down the page, and then has a little return to top button that you hit that and it takes you back up to the top, it's a pretty common concept, right? Those are using anchors. Okay, and this is a, a good example of um, most of these things. Obviously, uh, so I've got the original scheme example there, and then we show you what the creative department equivalent might be to access the home page or I'm sorry, the about news page on our website. So protocol, HTTP, domain, department, creativedepartment.com, the port is port 80, uh, the file or path is index.php, and then question mark Q defines the query string variable of Q, the value is about slash news, and then pound top refers to an anchor that would anchor you to the top of the page. Um, like, like I said at the beginning, IP address defines where it is, so it's like a street address for you, for um, your computer for your computer for your physical physical space for your network. Um, so it is to say, like this is my machine and it has a specific IP address, and that's where you come to find it. So like a street address. Um, and we don't we don't actually have an example of an IP address in here, but you've seen them. It's like seventy one dot two thirty two dot one fifty dot two fifty. But is that a code assigned uh, to like a server? Yeah, like what's the street address of your house? Yeah. Like 255, right, uh, exactly. uh, right. Meadow Lane. Exactly. Same so if I wanted to host a, a website on my own computer, do I designate a IP address? You actually have already been given one by the person who right. has facilitated your getting online. Okay, so your ISP gives you an IP address. Every exactly. computer that's online has its own IP address. Right. Now some computers share IP addresses. It's actually every gateway onto the internet has an IP address. So here at the creative department, we all actually surf from the same IP address, and uh, it's does that does that stay constant? Because I think my computer generates. Yep. There's a distinction between a, a dynamic and a static okay, IP okay. address, right? And so for businesses, it's common to maintain a single IP address, especially for us because we have servers. Okay, when we we'll get to DNS and in, in, on the next slide, but. Uh, for, to create a domain record, creativedepartment.com, that points at a specific server, that IP address can never change. It always has to stay the same, otherwise the DNS would never know how to find the server. Okay, So uh, that's an excellent question, but yes, you do change. Typically residential customers and things like that, they will get a dynamically generated new IP address based on you know when you connect and how often your ISP needs to renew your lease, etc. So the DNS itself is is the the what we seek. It's the name of it stands literally for domain name server, but it translates the name the little like the number two and or I'm sorry, it translates a name to that number that address that we were just talking about. So it's the difference between um, this is the creative department, but its physical address is 1209 Sycamore Street. So what's a, what's a browser? A browser is literally an application that lives on your actual machine. And it, it should be looked at as no more than just an application, no different than, than Word is, no different than, you know, calculator is. It's just an application that takes all of that HTML that it gets passed from a server, which we'll get into in a second, get into in a second and it assembles it for you and shows you what it's supposed to look like. So it requires no, it literally requires no internet connectivity to get to it because you could open a browser, right, and, and, and go to some file that's on your actual machine, some local file, if you knew the file path. Um, so it's just an application that finds, a takes a file path, takes a URL, <coughs> takes a domain name, and takes you to that, that particular resource.